Hello, everyone. Debbie Bird Smith here. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm here with Christopher, and we are um, so excited about tonight's uh, webcast. Thanks for joining us here on this Saturday night, Sunday morning, wherever you are. And uh, let's just begin with a, a prayer in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Jesus, we thank you for all that you've uh, shown us, you've given us, the many, many um, sacramentals that you have blessed us with. And we thank you for this opportunity to talk about a very very special sacramental that you have given to one of your um, chosen visionaries. And so we hope that this will bless everyone who's watching now and in the future. Amen. In the name of the Father, Amen. and the Holy Spirit. So tonight we're going, to be talking, we're going to be talking a little bit about um, uh, the purple scapular and uh, Marie Julia Jehenny. Many of you are already familiar with some of her her um, uh, prophecies and her um, uh, visions that she's had, the visitations. Um, and before we we get too far into this, I just wanted to mention for those of you who might not have this uh, Pieta of the Apost uh, Apocalypse. I can't talk tonight. That's a lot of peas, let me tell you. Um, uh, book uh, that this is available on Amazon. And also to let you know that there's a new book that's going to be coming out with uh, a new prayer book. And we're going to be talking about the purple scapular tonight. Uh, there's so much to cover with Marie Julia Jehenny that we couldn't possibly, we'd have to do a whole series. We couldn't do it in one broadcast. But we did want to talk about the purple scapular because it offers so much to us, particularly these times of, of uh, chastisement, coming tribulation, all of the things that we are uh, for sure facing and um, uh, dealing with currently and what is to come. So um, these the prayers particularly that are um, attached to the purple scapula are in the new book that will be coming out. And so I just wanted to let you know about that. I'm sure that Ron or, you know, all the people on the team will be letting you know when that uh, is uh, ready for publication and it's available. Uh, but I did want to mention, since we're talking about the purple scapular, that that's going to be one of the things that are covered in this new book. And so, well, we're very happy to have Christopher with us tonight. And I see that you guys have already um uh started some <clears throat> comments and so i appreciate all of your comments i'll be reading those but um i'm going to kind of kick it over to christopher he has some things uh on the the purple scapula to talk about and some uh visuals i think to show us so go ahead chris yes let's, let's yes well, well it's there yeah well it's it's so good to be back on here it's uh it's always a joy to be on the show with you debbie and uh, and Ron, thanks again for for having me on here, and, and for all of you listening and watching, it's uh, it's an honor to be with you tonight. So, yeah, a little bit about the purple scapulars. So, it's actually something that I just recently discovered. My brother, seminarian. For those of you who don't know, I'm a seminarian right now in my first semester of seminary. So please pray for me. Um, but my brother, seminarian, he was actually the one that introduced me to the purple scapular, and it was actually this purple scapular that he showed me. Uh, so I have one with me here. This is actually his. Shout out to Eric Palazic. He's my he's my uh, seminarian brother. I told him I'd give him a shout out. <laughs> yes, thank you, Eric. God bless you, brother. He's he's wonderful. Loves our lady. Loves our lady. Um, but yeah, Eric showed me his scapular, and I was. I like, love oh, it. The scapular is 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 very large. It's big. Yeah, it's a big it's scapular, big. and it has big things attached to it. And I always think yes. of it like that it's big because it's big. And, um... <laughs> <laughs> yes. And there's a little video that I'll show you guys later that actually it's really well done. It, it shows you in detail the imagery on it. It explains uh, the images that are on it and all of that. So we'll, we'll a little bit later in the interview uh, and, and the webcast, we'll be we'll be talking very, about that. all very symbolic but, and important. Symbolism. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very much. Yeah. And I think it's appropriate, too, that it's purple and we're in the season of Advent. I think that's mm -hmm. pretty pretty impressive. Uh, but um, yeah, so the purple scapular is very new to me. I just ordered my first two myself um, once I learned a little bit more about it and I started doing some research. So what I'd love to do, uh, Debbie, if it's all right with you, is just kind of share a little bit about what the purple scapular is for those who might not know uh, what it is or for those who've heard of it but might need a refresher. I can, you know, share a little bit about, you know, what it is and, and uh, where it came from. 
please, yeah, please let let let, let everyone know about um, sort of how uh, Marie Julie found out about the scapular and how that came about, and yeah, very interesting because she received so many messages and so many visions and prophecies that were right. very significant. And so I would encourage anybody that's watching not only to read her and find out about the scapular, but also of the, all of the other things that she's talked about, which the three days of darkness, other coming chastisements, um, what's going to happen in the tribulation and at, there's so many things that she talked about, but particularly that's, you have, you have to sort of take her in, in, Plunks, you know, you have to sort of take yeah. <laughs> because there's so much. So please go ahead and tell us all about the uh, yeah popular and how that came about. Very absolutely. Yeah, you know what? I'll share a little bit about uh, Marie Julie Jahani first, just to give a little bit of an intro of who she is, and then I'll, I'll get into the purple scapular itself. So <laughs> Marie Julie Jahani was born in 1850. Um, and this was a Catholic mystic who lived in rural small town France, in the northwest part of France. Um, and this was, again, back in the 1800s. She was she became pretty known through her apparitions into the late 1800s. She had our Lord Jesus and Mary both um, appearing to her. And that's where a lot of those messages came in that Debbie was just talking about, as well as the purple scapula. And she passed away at the age of 90. But it was at the age, I believe, I think she was 38 um when she started receiving the stigmata i believe that's the age that she was but yeah she she mm -hmm. was a mystic and she also had the stigmata the wounds of christ um so that was a really beautiful thing that she offered up throughout her life she was a victim soul i know sometimes we'll refer to them as victim souls of living a, a, a sorrowful suffering life for the sake of christ his church and others so a really really beautiful french mystic mm -hmm. and, and stigmatist from the 1800s that's just a very brief uh, synopsis of who she was, but it was in 1878 in that small town in Northwest France where Our Lady and Jesus himself appeared to the approved mystic, and she is approved by the church. We can get into that later, um, but that's when they appeared to her in 1878, and in that apparition, they showed her the scapular, the purple scapular, and another name for that purple scapular is the scapular of benediction and protection. That's the other name for it the scapular of benediction and protection. Um, but most people call it the purple scapular. Now, a lot of people ask, you know, what are the promises that are associated with this purple scapular? And this is what Our Lady herself promised Marie Julie about this scapular. She said, quote, Those will see, they will see their family and home protected from fires and chastisements, storms and darkness. They will have light as if it were plain day, she also said, it'll be like a lightning rod beneath which the blows of divine wrath will not strike. And Jesus also revealed that those who reverently use this purple scapular will, quote, be spared the troubles of the soul and will be sheltered from danger as if they already possess heaven. So let's just stop there for a second. I mean, that's pretty, that's pretty amazing. <laughs> it really, uh, those I are mean, it's very a big, profound promises. That's a big promise, isn't it? Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And what's interesting, you know, with those promises, it's not just for those who wear it. It's anyone who has possession of it. So with this particular scapular, if you look how big it is, you can wear it and people do wear it. And, and that's a beautiful thing, but you don't have to wear it. So unlike the brown scapular, for example, which I'm wearing one, that's, you know, a scapular that you'll wear uh, more often. But with the purple scapular, what most people do is they actually hang it up in their home in a prominent place in their home, maybe by the entryway, for example, um, or maybe in the living room, if that's where they pray. You could also have a couple different purple scapulars throughout your house. You can have them in your car. You can carry one around in your purse or your wallet. If you could fit that in your wallet, that's a pretty big wallet. But um, yeah, there's, you know, you could, you could put the purple scapular anywhere, anywhere, and you don't have to wear it uh, directly. You can, but you don't have to in order for you to receive the graces from it. Uh, which I thought it was protects, interesting as well. It protects everyone in the house when you have it. You know, yes. the brown scapular, that's a protection for us. The great thing right. about the purple scapular is we hang it up in our homes, and this is right. protecting everyone who's under our roof. Um, right. And uh, kind of keeps the bad stuff out and the good stuff in. You know, that's right. Which we definitely need now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. Oh, I know. I know. Especially with. Yeah. Yes. 
Yes, exactly. I mean, that's what hit me was this is so important for the times that we're in right now, you know, with, with everything just falling apart, right? Like the, you know, the hu- humanity is just losing its mind. And we know that there's going to be, you know, darkness ahead, the three days of darkness. We, I know a lot of the viewers and listeners are familiar with that, the divine chastisements, the whole timeline from countdown to the kingdom people have been following. And we know that there's rough times ahead. Um, and so this purple scapular, in my opinion, I mean, it, it's a must have, you have to have this thing. Um, and that was the urgency for me to get them myself. And that was also the urgency for me to, you know, want to share the purple scapular and what it is and where it came from and the promises that it gives us, um, with, with the viewers tonight. It's, it's an urgency that I sense, you know, there is an urgency. And I think, uh, I think we're not the only ones that are feeling as if things are, uh, things seem to be ramping up a little bit things seem to be moving along a little bit um more and of course we we experienced a pandemic and um you know there now there is is a lot of chatter about um other pandemics that are following up other pandemics that are uh (laughs) maybe unleashed however they come about um right right that you know um you know, our blessed mother and Jesus has been coming to us and talking to us about these things. And part of it is not only to protect ourselves with our prayers and the sacraments that we've been given through the church of mm-hmm. uh, confession and the Eucharist and and uh, mm-hmm. all of the wonderful things that bring us grace, but real, very real, practical um, sort of uh, advice, practical um, uh, messages that we're getting about how to prepare and um, <laughs> kind of navigate these these chastisements and things that are that are coming our way. And the purple scapular is one of the biggest, most powerful things that we can do. Um, of course, you know, th- these, all of these things, and I just want to say all of these things have to be done with faith and all Absolutely. of these things have to be done with, with a, an understanding of what they represent and how they work. Um, you can't just hang up a purple scapular in your house and say, okay, I've got it. I'm okay. Now um, these are all things that, um, that uh, cultivate our faith and that help us to remind us these are holy. Mother Angelica, you know, she used to call call these these kinds of things our holy reminders, our holy um, our holy pictures, our holy images, our holy our scapulars, our medals, the things that we have that we use to remind ourselves of our faith to keep it uppermost in our mind, because our faith has to be fed. Just like our right. bodies need to be fed, our souls need to be fed. And there's all kinds of food available for us. And I always think of our sacramentals as those almost kind of snacks that we get. <laughs> yes. you know, they're, they're everywhere. You know, there are rosaries we carry and there are scapulars that we wear. And there are pictures on our walls and our medals that we wear. and All of these things. And so... Uh, the purple scapular is a very, very powerful sacramental that we can use. And of course, when you get one, you want to have it blessed. And I don't know yeah. if you want to talk about there's a special blessing also. Yes. And actually, you know, I see several questions already, which is just so wonderful about where can they get the, the scapular? Mm-hmm. Does it need to be blessed and all that? So, um, yeah. So something that came to mind when you were saying that is is just to affirm what you've already said of this. This is not a superstitious kind of a thing. This is approved by the church, but you, it requires faith. Like Debbie said, like if you just have this purple scapular in your house and you don't actually have faith in who, if you don't have faith in the one who actually gave us the purple scapular, if you don't do the prayers that go with the purple scapular, then, you know, what's it doing on your wall? It's not going to help you. It's not some superstitious dream catcher or something like that. That's not what this is. So um, to affirm that. And yes, there are places that you can get the purple scapular. And I could share that towards the end of the interview as far as where you can get it. And this one place that I actually got mine from 
they do a wonderful service where they actually already have it blessed by a priest before they even send it to you. They have it blessed by a priest. They put Lord's water on it as well. Um, and they touch it to multiple first class relics of uh, different saints and the true cross as well. So they, they do everything before they even send it to you, which is really maybe wonderful. So I'll make sure that's to... not about putting in the description. We'll put, maybe, maybe yeah, well, you can, we'll make sure to drop the links. Yeah, I'll talk to Ron about there, dropping the links to everything um, yeah. of where you can get it, where I got it, it was like $20 for one scapular. Um, Cause they are, they are big and nice and, and whatnot. So um, the place that I got it was a nonprofit as well, to my understanding. So anyways, yeah, we'll drop links of where oh, you can get yeah. it with all the, the information. So give me the just, uh, so you can, yeah, exactly. We'll <laughs> drop the deets in the, in the comments. There you go, Debbie. There you go. But uh, yeah. So um, another thing, so I know this audience is all probably pretty big fans of Christine Watkins. I think we all know who she is uh, with all of her wonderful works at Queen of Peace Media um, she has multiple books. She has a really great YouTube channel. If you don't know Christine Watkins, please look her up. But she actually, according to the resources that I have found, she has the purple scapular at her house in, out in California. And it actually protected her house and her property from those horrible forest fires um, that happened a couple years ago. So I, I found this online um, where it was saying that you know, there are many witnesses to the supernaturally protective value of the purple scapular. And just one example was a few years ago where Christine Watkins of California had it at, in her home and on a wall in her home. And she prayed the purple scapular prayers, which we'll do at the end of this episode. We'll pray those prayers together. But she said, you know, two days later, after they did the prayers, one of the most massive wildfires in California history began racing right toward her neighborhood. And they were like a hundred foot wall of flames going right towards her house and the fire was from every angle. It was, you know, surrounding the whole property and all around, you know, multiple homes and properties were getting destroyed by the fires, but her house and her property were completely untouched and the fires moved around the entire thing, um, leaving it completely safe, which is, it's miraculous. Um, and, and I think the purple scapular was a part of that. Um, because that's one of the promises is protecting mm -hmm. you, your loved ones, your property, your property from divine yeah. chastisements. And it actually specifically said in a video that I saw, like from intense fires and whatnot was one of the specific things it mentioned um, about, you know, divine protection. So that's just one example, I'm sure, of many of the purple scapular in action protecting her home and her property from the fires, which is just it's miraculous. Yeah. And, you know, and that's one of the things that's so amazing about this particular scapular, because we hear about, you know, of course, most people are very familiar with the brown scapular um, right. from right. Um, uh, uh, Arabian <clears throat> Carmel and uh, what the brown scapular. And it, it gives you great personal protection. And there are wonderful right. promises that are uh, attached to the brown scapular. And of course, we uh, we we encourage everyone to have and wear the brown scapular. Um, but this is this scapular, as you said, Christopher, it it talks about property. That this right. this 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 puts this sort of protective bubble around us that um and our homes that we have have this. And I do know people who do wear the purple scapular. Yes, um, yes. Some people do. There's some people wear it because yes. They want that added added um, protection, and again, this is this is a which is totally fine to do that. That is totally one hundred percent okay. It's, it's a it's a um, it's a comment on faith, um, and right. so um, uh, so yeah, it's interesting that you know forest fires. I live in I live in uh, in storms. It talks specifically about storms. I live in Florida. Um, so, you know, we have had a storm or two, uh, we've been right. known to have them. <laughs> we've been known to have a hurricane or two, a tropical storm or two. And, uh, so these, all of these things, when we can call on, on our God, when we can show our faith, when we can show our, our, uh, conviction in our beliefs and, and give him the glory for them, you know, uh, this is this is a wonderful example of how our faith works. I know uh, a lot of people are, are Protestant brothers and sisters mm -hmm. don't don't always understand, but mm -hmm. but this is just a a a uh, a step in faith that we take. 
and mm -hmm. uh, for every sacrament, for every mm -hmm. sacrament, there is a, a tangible sign. And so That's right. these tangible signs really help to build our faith. And, Absolutely. Uh, so, so go ahead. I, I, I'm sorry. Yeah. You no, know. no. Well, I think just, just like you said, you know, they're there to help our faith. It's not to replace our faith, right? right. These sac right. all sacramentals, including the purple scapular, they're to help our faith. They're to help strengthen it and to affirm our faith, but they're not to replace our faith. And we, I think we have to remember that yes. um, because we, we place our faith in God, not in a piece of wool, right? As, as cool and pretty as it is, like our faith is, is not in a purple piece of wool. It's in the God of the universe. But then so, when things happen like that, that happen to Christine, we go, whoa. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. Our God is so awesome. Our God is exactly. so awesome. You know? He is. Yeah. He is. He is absolutely awesome. So I, I think something, you know, I think could be helpful is maybe doing a little bit of an, you know, an FAQ section for the purple scapular. Some of the most, you know, common questions people might have about it and just kind of yeah, sharing, you know, yeah. is it approved by the church? You know, where did this come from again? Um, I just have like a brief list. I think that could probably be helpful for some okay. of our listeners and viewers. Um, so, you know, if people ask, what is the purple scapular? I know we already mentioned a little bit. It is a sacramental of the church um, and it's primarily used for display on a wall in a home. Once again, you can wear it. That's totally fine. You can take it around in your purse. You can have it in your car. You can have multiple. You're not limited to one. Um, but yeah, it's two purple wool panels and they're connected by cords. Uh, one of the cord has three knots and the other cord has two knots. And I don't actually know why that's the case. It's kind of a, a mystery, a mysterious part of the purple scapular as far as why are there five knots and, and why are they separated the way they are? What I have heard that seems pretty legitimate is the five knots represent the five wounds of Christ mm -hmm. on, on the cross. But again, I don't know definitively on that. Um, but yeah, so it, it's it's for divine protection for your family and for yourself against the natural disasters like we talked about, the storms and the fires, as well as the supernatural chastisements, which are to come. I mean, and it even says on this particular article that it's a protection against intruders as well for your home, which yes. I found interesting. I've seen that. So what's the history, the brief history of the purple scapular? Once again, it was in 1878. So this has been around for a while. Uh, 1878 is when it was given to the mystic Marie-Julie Jehenny in France, um, a French mystic and stigmatist. Um, Our Lady and Jesus appeared to her and gave her this. Um, is it the purple scapular? It does have another name, like I mentioned. So it's it's the purple scapular or the benediction, the scapular of benediction and protection. It's the other name for it. Um, and I'll read, I think just for, I know we have a lot of people that just came in a little bit later into the into the webcast. So maybe just one more time going over the promises themselves that are associated with it um, could be helpful. So the, again, Our Lady promised that we will see their family and home protected from fires and chastisements, storms and darkness. They will have a light as if it were plain day. Um, then they also said, it'll be like a lightning rod beneath which the blows of divine wrath will not strike. And then our Lord himself also said that they will be spared the troubles of the soul and they will be sheltered from danger as if they already possess heaven. Um, so those are the promises of the purple scapular. Um, and then the, the last thing too, that I can see on here, um, it was actually to my my knowledge, it was approved by the church. I had an article pulled up for that. I need to look down a little bit to find that. But um, in the meantime, I do have a brief video, if you want, Debbie. Um, it's just a few minutes that it's really well done as far as just, it kind of shows up close. The scapular itself explains the imagery found on the scapular um, and that kind of thing. I think that could be beneficial for the listeners and viewers. What do you think? Should we sure. try to play that? Let's do that. All right. I'm going to try to share my screen here so give me one second everyone let's do this present share screen all right i think it's this one all right here we go all right let me know if you can hear it
Yeah, that was um, yeah. Wasn't that wonderful? Yeah, Very I detailed. just I thought, yeah. <laughs> I love the way it showed the detail in the scapular. Exactly. That's what yeah. I figured. I was like, you know, what? I could talk about the purple scapular, but I think the video is just going to help a lot more. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much <laughs> so, for sharing that. Yeah. Yeah. I hope it came through. Okay. It looked fine. Yeah, on it did. I, yeah, hope yeah, our, I, I hope so. for our viewers it looked alright. But uh, yeah, and and one thing that I forgot to mention too is because there's a limited availability for the purple scapular right now, um, and I know they're working on getting more of them made. But they they even said that I believe it was our Lord Himself that said, even those who desire to have it that are not able to have it in that moment will still receive great graces for desiring to have it. So. If you don't currently have it, don't stress, don't be anxious about that. Obviously, do the best you can to get one. Once again, we'll drop the links. Um, and I actually saw someone mention the Catholic Foundation, Mary Foundation. That is the the source uh, that I got my hey, scapulars from. Hey, they are hey. the ones. They're wonderful. Yes, hey, there it is. Yes. yes so here, that here. is also not, not sponsored uh, by them or anything, but I 100% recommend that's who I personally use. That's who I personally recommend. So we'll make sure to drop the links uh, for all of you once again to please support them as they support us by giving us uh, the purple scapular, among many other wonderful things. So um, that is the resource that I was going to share. So there you go. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll just <laughs> but, leave that uh, now. And, and yeah, um, yeah. Uh, but so yeah, I thought it was fascinating that. You don't even have to have it to, to receive graces just for desiring it and having faith in God and the sacramental he gave us. Um, so I thought that was that was wonderful. Well, let's yeah. talk a little bit about the the details of the symbolism of the uh, the images that are on the scapular. Um, can you can you talk about that a little bit, Christopher, of, of uh, these very beautiful and symbolic images that we have on the scapula. Yeah. Um, yeah, I can, I can do my best. I still know very little about all the symbolism just because there's so much and I just stumbled across it. Um, but yeah, once again, that video explains it very well. So I recommend all those people. That video was also found on the Catholic uh, Foundation, Mary Foundation website. Um, but yeah, I know that on the scapula itself, uh, like I mentioned, the five knots, three on the one side, two on the other side. Um, I don't know for sure, but I believe the five knots represent the five wounds of Christ. Um, you have the three nails with blood. Um, you have the three nails with blood trickling down into the cup. And so, you know, it, it's the scapular really represents the passion of our Lord, the crucifixion, the suffering that he gave for us, for all of his children and for the world. Um you know, and, and it really, with the chalice, with his, with his blood, uh, his crown of thorns wrapped around the chalice with the blood, it symbolizes his sacrificial offering of himself. Um, and that it's because of his sacrificial offering on the cross that we are able to have his divine protection from heaven during, you know, the chastisements to come. Um, and it's just, it's a really profound, really profound symbolism, not to mention the color purple, you know, like, like I mentioned before, you know, us talking about this in the Advent season is pretty providential, but it's, it's purple is a color of humility. It's a color of royalty as well, you know, as it's a color of a king, a color of a queen, but it also is a color of humility. And that is our Lord. He, he is humility. He's a perfect embodiment of humility. So, um, 
yeah, I mean, I, I know there's so much more about the symbolism that I don't actually fully understand yet. I'm still trying to unpack it myself. Is there anything that you have to add? Well, uh, I just about, have, about the uh, I just have in, in, um, in the book that I have, which has some uh, wonderful writings on um, Marie Julia uh, Jenny, uh, it does say that the three drops of blood will go to join together and fall into the small chalice painted right. in red. The chalice right. is actually in red. And the yes. chalice is surrounded with a crown of thorns. And there are three crosses engraved on the front of the chalice, um, which I thought was very, um, a very interesting little detail that could easily be missed is the three crosses that are actually on the chalice. Um, mm. the, this is the side of the scapular um, that is on the mantle of the Holy Virgin. And I noticed that the scapular hangs with two violet straps. It also has um, this sort of uh, ball um, hanging over um, the, the top of the three crosses. And um, I, I don't know, um, uh, they're saying that, you know, this, this is a little bit bigger than the palm of your hand. And I guess that depends on what size hand you have. <laughs> Uh, it yes. may not be bigger than your hand. I'm sure it's bigger than mine. I have I have pretty small hands. <laughs> oh, okay. um, uh, but yeah, it's uh. Let's see. Let's see. I mean, the palm. It's bigger than the palm of my hand for sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, it's, it's pretty it's, big. It's pretty. It's pretty. Pretty big. So yeah. we have all the symbolism of the blood going into the chalice, the cross, mm -hmm. um, the nails, and. Um, uh, the three nails, and I know that there are other places too. Um, uh, and the top of it really is like a crown, but it's also mm -hmm. described as a sponge. It's the sponge. I know someone, I saw someone just ask, and I think it's the sponge to symbolize the sponge of hyssop that was brought right. to Christ when he was, right. when he was thirsting on the cross. And they offer him this. So there's so much symbolism about the, the, um, uh, the, the, uh, the crucifixion on here right. that are just wonderful um uh jesus's um uh you know torture before he was um taken to the cross and then what happened on the cross and then of course then we have um uh the holy virgin on the back on the other side of the um um uh, so also the color, let's talk about the color again. The color yes. is, is purple, is a violet, but it's also yes. red. And this red, of course, it, it, it represents uh, the blood of Christ. It represents the sacrifice of Christ. So um, the colors, uh, so much is, is um, it's telling us so much. And, and this is one of the beauties of our Catholic faith is that we have all these visual images that we yes. kind of can put it all together and we really um, get this picture of what this visual image is that this is giving us. It really tells us the story of the crucifixion right here on this piece of cloth. So, um, so if we can talk then a little bit about the other side because um, there's some very interesting things on the other side as well. Yes, yeah, so with the with our lady holding jesus and the angel here this time yeah so obviously it's actually very much like the book that we talked about from ron in the in the beginning with the pieta right with our lady holding christ and um just as our lady held christ she also holds us right she holds us close to her immaculate heart um and we have the angel um we have the angel washing here it is. We have the angel washing the feet of Jesus with the blood coming down from his feet. There's also, you can't really see it, I don't think on here too well, but there's actually like teardrops or water drops trickling down at the bottom. Um, and then obviously there's the ladder that you see in the in the video we watched. You know, she said to remember, um, remember this ladder. Like, is it the ladder, you know, helping us to get to heaven? Um, you know, she also mentioned the reed. Again, I, I'm not sure what all the symbolism means yet, but there's the ladder, there's the reed, there's the washing of the feet, the angel washing the, the wounds of Christ, the, the water trickling down off the feet of Christ towards the ground, Our Lady holding Christ, uh, you know, in her arms, weeping. Um, it's a very, very powerful image. 
And um, I think it's a, it's a great reminder that, you know, with everything that, including right now, but also with what's to come in the future, our lady is going to hold us in her arms, right? She is the ark for our times. Um, and she's going to keep us close to her. She's going to wrap us and protect us. And she's going to hold us close to her, just like she held Jesus close to her. Um, and so I think that's a reminder, you know, to have our trust and our faith in God and also in his mother and ours. Um, I think so. one of the interesting things about the the emphasis on the feet mm -hmm. um, is uh, very symbolic. Of course, Jesus in the Last Supper, he washed the feet of the mm -hmm. apostles and he um, did it as a, um, a show and a symbol of humility for us to wash each other's feet. And the angel is crying at the feet of Jesus. And one of the things that's really suggested in this wounds, these wounds of Jesus, and we do tend to think of the wounds on the hands and we think of the bloody thorns. Um, but one of the things that this is doing, I think, is bringing our attention to the wounds on the feet of Jesus and to meditate mm -hmm. on these wounds of the feet of Jesus and the humility that the angel is showing and that the Blessed Mother is showing um, uh, through all of these images. And of course, the reed, he was beaten with the reed. Um, yes. <clears throat> um, uh, and uh, again, uh, you know, all of these things are great. You could take each tiny component of this scapular and 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 have a wonderful meditation on any one of these. But I think the fact that the, the feet are being particularly emphasized in the uh, the, the picture that we have on the um, the side with the Blessed Mother and the angel mm. is, is a, a very powerful symbol of yeah. humility and the right. wounds of Jesus's feet. You know, they put a nail in each hand. They put one right. nail through two feet, um, uh, which which had to be. Um, I, I mean, I don't think we think about this stuff very much, but it had to be just excruciatingly painful. Mm. Um, you know, twice, almost twice as painful, if if you will, in one in one sense. Um, yes, and so. Um, you know, these are these so many things, so many things that we can meditate on and the sacrifice of our Lord on the cross and uh, how much the angels came and ministered to him. Um, whether we saw them or not, they were there. Right. Yes. They're that's right. To him. And that's uh, right. he asks us to um, uh, to minister to him as well. Uh, to meditate right. on these things, and uh, so it's 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 truly truly a beautiful, uh, beautiful beautiful scapular, beautiful symbol mm. of of Christ's um, uh, crucifixion and all that he suffered and brought to us through the scapular. So, um, yeah. uh, absolutely, and I I know that. Some people were wondering about the church approval, and I did find it. I'm proud of myself. Okay. Oh, right. <laughs> so, so is the purple? <laughs> I, I was like, I had it earlier. I was like, I don't know where it went, but Jesus will help me, and He did. So, praise Jesus. But, um, so the question, you know, is the purple scapular officially approved by the Catholic Church? The answer is yes. From my research and and the research of others, the answer is yes. It is approved. Uh, the purple scapular is fully approved by the Catholic Church. Additionally, and I'm reading from Mary Foundation, uh, is this, this is what they have here. Uh, they have, additionally, since its inception, devotion to it has never been suppressed or discouraged by the church. Uh, introduced for universal devotion by Our Lady herself over 140 years ago, it has been in continuous use as a sacramental by the faithful ever since. Um, so there you have it. And it actually talks about uh, you know, the investigations of Marie Julie's bishop at the time. Uh, so in 1875, three years before her purple scapular apparitions, she was already fully investigated and formally approved by her local ordinary Bishop Fournier of Nantes in France. 
Uh, additionally, a representative of the Vatican Commission, who was monitoring her case, performed an exorcism over her and declared that her experiences were supernaturally granted by heaven. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it, it goes on and on about that. But, you know, for my research and the research of others, it, it looks like it is approved by the church. They had uh, her local bishop investigate her, the apparitions, everything involved. Um, and then in addition to that, you know, they had a Vatican commission that also approved everything going on. So that's, that's pretty, pretty dang good as far as church investigations yeah. go. <laughs> well, they're, um, pretty thorough. So they're pretty thorough on these things. They and, are, and they should be. It's yeah, important that be. the church is, mm -hmm. you know, it, it has its processes for a reason, um, you know, and it's important that we re remain submissive to the church and the church's decisions. And, um, but yeah, everything, you know, up to this point has been completely in line with Catholic Church teaching and doctrine and um, nothing has been condemned. So, um, yeah, and I know a lot of people really like Father Rippinger uh, on YouTube. Yeah, I'm a big fan happen. myself. He's mm -hmm. he's wonderful, wonderful, wonderful priest. And to my knowledge, I've actually seen him mention the Purple Scapular before. I believe someone in the comments just even mentioned that they were at a conference with Father there and he seemed to have blessed uh, the scapulars at the conference. So Father Ripperger, yeah, he actually that's a that's a good sign too. A lot. Listen, if Father Ripperger's in my book, if Father Ripperger's talking about it, pay attention. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Holy, holy priest, and right. he talks about the purple scapular quite a bit. That's actually, right. look on that's YouTube. Right. Let's look up purple scapular or Father Ripperger, and you will be able to find all kinds of snippets. Uh, I don't know that right. they're um, big, long, but there's a lot of snippets. Short. Of him I've only seen short ones him. so far. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because he, he does bring it up because it is a powerful protection. I think the other thing, too, that it, it talks about is if if we're in the situation where we're in a storm or we're in a, a you know, in darkness where things are, that yes. this will bring light to you. Yes. You will see uh, plain as day uh even uh, in the three days of darkness to my understanding darkness. Um, so it's going to bring light to us as well so many yeah. many many graces that can be be <laughs> um uh, uh acquired through this oh, one very very holy uh sacramental and um yes so absolutely uh, what else what else do we want to say about yeah well there was one, you know, I saw, I'm trying to scan over the, the comments here. If I'm not looking directly at the, at the camera, I'm trying to keep up with the comments. Um, it's so wonderful to see so many people uh, participating. But I, I saw someone mention about, you know, not wearing the scapular in public or keeping it hidden underneath. And, and I kindly encourage you, you know, no, don't, don't be afraid to wear it in public. Let it be, you know, an exterior an exterior symbol of your interior disposition like that's the whole point of of sacramentals like let it be an external sign of your interior heart and your interior disposition your interior love for christ like it's okay to show that in a physical form you know if it's a scapular if it's a miraculous metal um don't be afraid you know it's re remind yourself why you're doing it it's 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 a sign for you and who you belong to you belong to god the father you belong to jesus christ you belong to our lady you know don't hide that don't you know don't hide it don't hide the light under under the bushel right let it shine in the darkness the darkness will not overcome it um despite if they mock you reject you socially crucify you whatever they try to do remember that they rejected god first and if they're going to reject him, they're going to reject us. And that's okay, because we can offer that up to him. We can unite our suffering, that discomfort of standing in the Walmart line while people are staring at you because you have this massive, awesome-looking purple scapular around. That's okay. Offer it up to God. You, unite that to this. Unite that to this suffering on here. That's what it's for. So, again, I just encourage you to allow the scapular and all sacramentals for that matter, but especially the purple scapular, if you do decide to wear it, don't feel like you have to hide it. Yeah. You'd be amazed at how open people actually are um, when they see something like that. They're like, what are you wearing? What is that? It's a conversation starter. It's a catalyst for conversion. Um, so. I just want to encourage you, you know, if you're yeah, worried was, about what people think or if you're, yeah, if you're yeah, scared and uncomfortable, it's okay. Sometimes if my mom's scapular, they'll comment on what is that, you know. Um, right. Say, well, that's my Miraculous scapular. Metals. I don't know what it is. I, you know, they'll ask me, well, what is that, you know. And I just right. take it as a, as a, 
um, let's face it, some people are just going to call us crazy Catholics, those crazy weird Catholics. But some people are maybe genuinely curious about it and wonder about uh, where did that where did that tradition come from or where right. uh, what what happened. Um, but yeah, that that's happened to me before, and I've actually had other people tell me hide those brown straps, hide those things. You know, <laughs> no. people see that stuff, and I I think that's kind of uh, you know. Um, I mean, I'll put it under because it's maybe not right. You know, there, it's okay. It's okay, it's okay to, to it under. have it under. It's, it's not, not like a sin, but, but yeah. yeah, don't feel like you have to hide it. If, if you feel called by God and inspired by the Holy spirit to wear it in public, by all means do so, um, yes. do, do that, you know? Um, so yeah, again, you can wear the purple scapular. You can, you, you don't have to wear the purple scapular. It is a little bit different than the other scapulars. So you can hang it in your home in a prominent place, very similar to what father Michelle Rodrigue was saying about the Holy family crush. Um, very similar to father Michelle in the sense of put it in a prominent place, not in a closet. Um, the whole point is to have faith in God and in the sacramental he gave us. So put it in a prominent place, maybe by the doorway, you can have multiple of them. So maybe in a bedroom in a hallway, wherever everyone's going to see it, wherever you see it often. Because one of the things you want to do when you when you see the purple scapular, you want to pray the prayers. And again, we'll do the prayer at the end. Um, we'll also make sure to have links in the description where you can find the prayers. You can download and print out the prayers. I recommend you do that. Um, a lot of people will hang up the purple scapular in a frame in their home, and the prayers will be with the frame. I, and I, I actually, actually think that because I looked up on yeah. Pinterest about different right. ways people display look up on Pinterest or, you know, the internet, you because a lot there of people go. live in shadow boxes and different kinds of frames. And they've had the, the scapular in there with the prayers or the promises, right. which I think is a right. beautiful way to display. You it. saw it in the video. They had it in a video too, mm -hmm. uh, that we watched on, on this episode in that video, you saw it briefly at the end there, that little prayer card. To my knowledge, with again the Catholic Foundation, shout out to them. This is not sponsored by them, but that's where I got my purple scapular, scapular from. And they actually, so it comes blessed, like I mentioned, it touches the relics and the Lord's holy water um, and all of that. But it was also, um, it has that prayer card that mm -hmm. comes with it, and it has yes. the specific prayers and everything like that. So, um, I'm sure whether it's from them or from another place, you can find the purple scapular prayer online. We'll make sure to provide the links so that you can, um, you know, hang that up next to the purple scapular. That's what I would recommend as far as how to display the purple scapular, unless you want to wear it or both or have it in your oh. car, do it all. Do it all. Can't be <laughs> it's not going to hurt you. You know, it's, it's I ordered. Good. I ordered two um, on go. the website. I actually saw another, I saw another comment on here about, I'm definitely going to have that, you know, two order limit per week. I'm going to hit that. <laughs> and I was the same way. I was the same way. <laughs> I'm just going to order two every single week. God it, bless them. I'm it, so grateful for People who believe they'd make great gifts for Christmas, wouldn't they? That's what I'm doing. Just so y'all yeah. know, like I'm, yeah. I'm, that's what, that's my Christmas gift with all the, oh, all the money Mark. I have as a seminarian. <laughs> It's like, look, this yeah. is probably the best gift I can give you right now. So. Really, I, really, it is. Yeah, it really is. Hey, divine protection for that kind of a sacramental for twenty dollars. It's not yeah. too bad. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take That's it. Not bad at all. That's not yeah. bad at all. Yeah, I so, think someone called it a divine insurance policy. I, I like that. I really, really <laughs> like that. Um, but of course, our our insurance policy is God Himself. Like, we'll right. never never forget that. God never is our that. great protector. This is a great reminder. Right. And a great That's show right. of faith, but God right. is our protector. God is our everything. Yeah. He's our everything, <laughs> and uh, he's, yeah. he's he's such a good he's such a good he's such a good dad. He's such a good father that even That's if right. we can't sometimes see him or even feel him, he lets us know in so many ways that yeah, I'm still here. I'm still here. That's right. I'm I'm hanging around. Um, uh, so <laughs> That's right. Yeah, yeah I, I think the main thing I can encourage is please get the purple scapular or multiple if you're able. Um, and, you know, obviously our faith is in God. But again, let the purple scapular, let that be an external symbol of your interior disposition of heart, yes. um, because that's the whole purpose of it. Let that be a physical representation, a physical manifestation of your trust 
of your faith in God the Father. That's the whole point. Um, and remember, if you're not able to get the purple scapular right now, you can still receive great graces simply for desiring to have it. That's, that's how many graces come with this uh, purple scapular. You can receive great graces. This is from our Lord himself, simply if you desire to have one. Um, so don't panic if you can't have one right now. That's okay. And I just want to remind people, people are asking, uh, some people came in late. Um, um, there, there will be information in the description box. Yes. Um, we'll put it there. Give us, give us a minute. <laughs> Give us a minute here, but we will have it in the description box where you can um, you can order them. And as as Christopher said, they have been very uh, 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 very much in demand, and so uh, you may not always be able to get them right when you want to order them. But um, the desire for one and the uh, faith. In, in God's promise and praying the prayers, still pray the prayers, prayers. Too. still pray the prayers, yes. and um, uh, and use you know use all your sacramentals, use your holy water, use your Saint Benedict medals, use all the things that God has 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 uh, given us and offered to us uh, as as uh, uh, protect protectants and and. Uh, uh, helps in our faith. And um, so anything else that we can think of that we want to uh, kind of throw out there about the scapula or do we? Um, yeah, I think one last thing I can, I can think of is people, a couple of people were asking what blessing in particular should the priest bless the scapula? So let, two yes. things. So first of all, please make sure that a priest blesses all your sacramentals, including this, the purple scapula. You always want to have a priest blessing um, all of your sacramentals. So please make sure to do that. As far as a particular blessing, I don't know. I would have to look into that um, because the place that I'm getting them from, they already had a priest bless it. So I don't know what blessing that priest has done on the purple scapular. Um, but I'm sure if you Google it, something might come up. Um, and even if not, you can just talk to your priest about it and be like, hey, this is, you know, this is the purple scapular. I'd really like to have it blessed. And the, your priest should know what to do if there's not a, a particular one um, for the purple scapular. And again, there might be. I just don't I know. I do believe that there is. The I, I do think there is. There is a, um, so, my understanding is that there is yeah. a, a special prayer and right. uh, it's different than the uh it's right. different than the ins uh, installation in the brown scapular, which has its own right. it is specific a, prayer. Oh, that's, that's the other thing. So with the brown scapular, you get enrolled into the confraternity. That's not the case with the purple scapular. You don't have to belong to any official confraternity or anything like that. Um, you, you don't have to sign up or be a member or anything like that. Um, you just, you get the purple scapular, you make sure it's blessed, and then you have faith. Those are the three steps. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to make to make that clear. But again, maybe, Debbie, that's something you, myself, and Ron can look into of finding the, the specific prayer, and then we yeah. could share that with everyone. We with can everybody. share that, too. Um, but I do I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure there's a particular one. I'm, I'm sure that there is. Actually, I've, I, I'm, I'm sure I've read that, that there is a particular prayer. So um, Wonderful. And sometimes you have to search a little bit for priests who know the particular prayer or if you could have the particular prayer with you, because right, unfortunately right. there are so many sacramentals, there are so many things that are available to us. And sometimes every priest does not know um, right. what it's it a means lot. special prayer. There's a lot to know. Here's our seminarian. He'll be able to tell you he's, he's, uh, <laughs> he's, he's in this process right. of learning all these things. And, you know, That's a few right. years now, Chris, we're going to expect you to have all these answers. So That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Pay attention. No, but, no um, pressure. <laughs> we're, we're oh keeping, man, we're, we're we're keeping him around. We're we're um, hoping for uh, lots of uh, lots of information coming from Christopher. But um, we just, I just want to say thank you so much, Christopher, for this research that you did, for um, right. presenting this as you did. It's it's uh, it's it's wonderful to know uh, about these all of these things that we have at our disposal that feed our faith and that uh, we, we have at our, for the asking. And this is one of the things that we have to be very aware of as, as we get into more and more difficult times, uh, we see now that the purple scapula can be a little bit more difficult to come across. Not saying that we won't be, I'm not saying don't try because 
Um, I'm sure that they're putting them out as, as quickly as they can. But um, uh, these, these things may, may become more and more scarce for us. All of the religious articles that we have, all of the things that we're using, our, our scapulars, our rosaries, our crucifixes, all of these things, um, uh, we, we don't know. Um, as these chastisements begin, um, as, as the church is being attacked, which we know that it is, and we believe that it will continue to be, um, we want to take advantage of all of these things um, and prepare ourselves, continue to prepare, continue to make uh, uh, preparation for uh, all that is to come. We've been told of chastisements. We've been told we needed protection. We've been told that there is tribulation. We're already into the tribulation. Um, and um, uh, But with faith, we need not be afraid. Don't be afraid. Pray for perseverance. Pray for uh, for courage, for detachment, all of these things are important for us to face these times. But I'm so happy to know that there is one more very powerful sacramental that we have in the purple scapular to to help us, to strengthen us, and to protect us. So um, with that, uh, Christopher, do you have any last things you want to offer? Yeah. Um, I think the, the last thing is the prayer itself, the purple scapular prayer itself. Um, I do, I can pull up my screen here. It is kind of funny because it has a picture of Bud McFarlane, who's the, the founder of uh, Mary Foundation off to the side. So you'll just see him smiling there, but it is the prayer for the purple scapular. So if we want, we could put that on the screen and, and do the prayer together um, as a group. I think that'd be very powerful and we can wrap up from there. And also for everyone that came later into the show, um, I highly encourage you to watch the whole show. We covered a lot. I'm really grateful that you guys are here. And also make sure to, to get ready for the new book for uh, Mother and Refuge of the End Times, the End Times Spiritual Combat. Because Debbie, like you said in the beginning, it is going to have uh, the prayers for the purple scapular. Is that correct? That's right. Awesome. awesome. So make sure to book. pre-order it or whatever you need to do. Make sure you get your copy because you're, you're going to want it. So yes. I just wanted to mention that too. You're yeah. welcome, Ron. <laughs> 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 no, I'm kidding. It's an honor. So I, I love it. I'm part of the team too. So I'm, 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 I'm on it, but uh, yeah. So if that's cool with you, I can, I can bring up the, the, uh, the prayer itself and we'll just have great. Bud McFarlane praying with us on the side here. Great, <laughs> so, great, great. All right. One second here. All right. Let's do this purple scapular prayer. Here we go. All right. Can you see that? The prayer on the left there. I see it. I will add it. All right. Perfect. There we go. All right, Amazing. let's all pray this. Pray this together. And that bottom part, we're going to do five times. Uh, and again, this is word for word from Our Lady. This prayer, okay? All right. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I hail thee, Jesus crucified, for granting me life. I hail thee with all the joy of the angels and saints during your descent from the cross. I hail thee with the sadness of your mother while you rested on her immaculate heart and lap. O crux ave spes unica, et verbum caro factum est. O Jesus, conqueror of death, save us. Amen. O crux ave spes unica, et verbum caro factum est. O Jesus, conqueror of death, save us. Amen. O crux ave spes unica, et verbum caro factum est. O Jesus, conqueror of death, save us. Amen. O crux ave spes unica, et verbum caro factum est. O Jesus, conqueror of death, save us. Amen. O crux ave spes unica, et verbum caro factum est. O Jesus, conqueror of death, save us. Amen. Mary, our mother, queen, and refuge of the end times, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you so much, you Christopher. Go. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That was, so, that was wonderful. Um, I thank all of you for joining us. Um, we could not do this without you, um, without your support, and we ask you for your prayers. And uh, thank you for the encouragement. We see this all the time in your comments. We do read your comments and we appreciate them. 
Um, so thank you. Thank you so much for uh, your support. We, we, uh, we're doing our very best here at Mother and Refuge to kind of bring you as much information, especially in these times as we can. So um, God bless. We will see you next time. Um, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. Like the video. It does help the algorithm and it, share it with others if you think that they would be interested in this information. So with all of that being said, we'll say good night, God bless, and we will see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you.